Isn't the countryside beautiful? That's down to us, the shooters, hunters and anglers. So why do we let discussion about our sport turn so ugly? Some of the comments that I was seeing can only be described as disgusting. They didn't know what happened. They never knew the full story. Two weeks ago, at the end of October 2020, a member of a Facebook deerstalking group posted this video of a stag shot in water. Fraser MacDonald was the man who took the shot. Fraser regrets the film and, to an extent, the shot. He is particularly hurt by the reaction of fellow deer stalkers. You know, when you see when you see certain hunting videos, you know, there's only certain people understand what go on in them. When people start throwing it about and making accusations and they say, oh, look at this, look what's happened here, without knowing the full story, you know, if this video is going to give the sport such a bad name, why are you sharing it? So you, you didn't do any, any of the sharing yourself? No, no, not at all. Fraser was out stalking with West Highland hunting at the beginning of October, and Neil Rowntree, who runs West Highland, was present when Fraser took the shot. A friend of Fraser's took the film on his phone, sent it to another friend on WhatsApp, and from there it found its way to a member of that Facebook deerstalking group, Andy Richardson. Well, the first thing I thought was... What an absolute shambles of a, a shot. And who the hell's done it? Because at that moment in time, I certainly didn't know who'd done it. And a couple of the other people who sent me the film didn't know who'd done it. So we put it up on social media and then names started flying from all over the place. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's how it ended up. At first, Fraser reacted to the post with this comment, which explains the shot he took. Taking the criticism of the video point by point, the shot on the film was a follow-up shot to an unsuccessful shot not filmed. The animals were not driven into the water, there was a good backstop for the shot, and the animal took 60 seconds to die, well within the five minutes in Scottish Natural Heritage Guidelines. Fraser's comment seemed to have no effect. The comment I put on basically explained to people what had happened. Now, since then, I was I was sent screenshots of that comment on the page. So the comment did reach the page. Now, obviously, with the torrent of abuse that was apparent, um, I then deleted my Facebook page shortly after putting that comment on. So I don't know if, obviously, with me deleting my page completely, the comment was then removed as well. But I know for a fact that comment had reached the had reached the page and um, that the abuse had kind of all started from. If anything, things has got worse. I mean, like by by the Saturday night, things were just, you know, horrendous for me. You know, I had very little sleep from sort of Wednesday night through to the weekend. Um, Sunday hadn't really heard much about it at all. It wasn't until I came home, um, sitting on the sitting on the couch on Sunday night, that people via Instagram had seen the video, people that follow me on Instagram. These people then started hurtling me at abuse at me via Instagram as well. When you've got abuse coming from all sides, it's absolutely horrendous. That was it that was the scariest thing, you know, it's you know, th this video this video got out and I had absolutely zero control over it at all. Although Andy Richardson posted the film on Facebook, he says that videos like this should not be filmed nor posted and that there is no place for personal attacks. There shouldn't be any personal attacks on social media at all. Uh, you've got to stick to the facts that it, it looked to be a very bad shot. Uh, and what I would say to people is, for, for one, don't take these films. And for two, make sure once you've taken a film like it, then if it looks bad, delete it immediately and don't share it with your friends. One of the reasons many people on Facebook gave for disliking the video is, as they put it, it plays into the hands of the antis. The antis would have their chance to speak their minds about the video only if it reached the newspapers. That was when the British Deer Society got involved. The BDS does not want to speak to us about this, but we have pieced together the story. The BDS put out a statement condemning the video without talking to any of the people involved, even though they knew who they were. Its bosses might not like the video, nobody does, 
but the BDS's original statement was factually inaccurate. Having condemned the video, the BDS said it planned to hold an inquiry. The BDS then withdrew its statement. By then, crucially for Scotland's newspapers, the story went from man shoots deer to shooting organisation condemns man. Well, for me, this is day seven. You know, this has been going on for over a week. During that week, nobody from any of those pages has contacted me to ask me what happened. Okay? They just they went along their merry way, they made up the story of the scene, and in the process, me and you know the guys I was with got absolutely hounded. Have you heard anything from the British Deer Society? Have they asked you what went on? Heard absolutely nothing from them. The comments that were coming up on Facebook, you know, it was the people were basically, you know, just sitting in there passing comments. Okay. I was then sent a screenshot from the, the British Deer Society comment and saying they were going to make an investigation. But the comment they put across had they had basically already made their mind up. And it was at that point, it was no, one of those feelings, you know, when you read something and the blood just drains from your head. If you're going to do an investigation, surely you need to ask the parties involved. I've yet to hear from them. Someone gave the story to the Daily Record. Yesterday it came out in the Daily Record. Did you, did you pass it on to the newspaper? No, you mentioned no. You were going to do that. I didn't know it was in a newspaper, uh, not until you just told me. I think it was actually good that it got out into the Stoking forums, etc., and that there was a massive condemnation of the, the film from our side, and it yeah. kind of knocked on the head any kind of Telegraph, Independent, The Sun, etc., running it, that this is normal uh, within the shooting world. The Daily Record is still the only newspaper to print the story and is now the subject of both a complaint to the press regulator Ipso and a legal action by Neil Roundtree. The newspaper made a number of mistakes, including suggesting that Fraser shot the stag out of season. So, although the video looks awful, was the shot itself all that bad? Firearms expert Andrew Venables is one of the few on Facebook to defend, if not the video, at least the shot shown in the video. My understanding of the story behind the brief images we see is that there was a pressing need to deal with the deer involved. The professional involved in it, we have a stalker, we have a professional, called the shot in, the, in their opinion, the shot went in the right sort of place, a thoracic cavity, possibly high lung shot from what I could see. We all know that animals taken with a high lung shot take a little time to bleed out and deoxygenate depending on the level of adrenaline, the situation. I timed it as 61 or 62 seconds from the shot I saw going in when the deer was swimming across that shallow lagoon. Um, to what I call total collapse. And in the probably the last 10 seconds of that 60 seconds, the deer was in absolute terminal collapse. It was doing exactly what they do. The head was raising up, looking for a bit of blood pressure and oxygen, which the shot had obviously robbed it of. Was it perfect? No. Did it follow the Walt Disney script of what should happen? No. But I put thousands and thousands of animals on the floor I'm proud of the way I've dealt with everything, even when it went wrong. Um, some people may look and think, I'd have put in another shot or another shot. My experience of stalkers, as opposed to professional ghillies and professional deer managers, is that getting them to put in a decent first shot is important. Having them blaze away at the animal in the interim, possibly you know, causing more problems and distress, rather than allowing the animal to die in the time it takes to die from a chest shot, it's a subjective call. All I know is this. With the wisdom of hindsight, we'd all be perfect. And there's no hindsight in hunting. You just have what you're dealing with, the situation in front of you. You're responsible for the choices you take. An internet blog called The Ferret, which is funded by anti-hunting interests, including One Kind and Lush, picked up the Daily Record story. It quoted both the BDS, that had previously said it would retract its statement, and Scottish nationalist and former Scottish Environment Secretary Michael Russell, MSP. 
It is worth noting that the Scottish Government's own fairly horrifying advice is that a deer should die within five minutes of a shot and that its ongoing slaughter of Scottish deer has no upper limit for how long a deer can take to die as long as it is dead when it reaches the Scottish Government's collection centres. Michael Russell apparently doesn't know this. And, and then he just said that um, possibility of police are involved now. I heard from my local wildlife crime officer who I'm connected with through other work that we do in Fife. Uh, it's a very good working relationship and he certainly phoned me up on, uh, I don't know, Monday or Tuesday to see what uh, what was going on. Yeah, OK. Uh, and that's, um, that, that's, that's how the police got hold of it, y- yeah. Uh, yeah, possibly, yes. So where does this storm leave us? Neil continues his work fighting the antis by presenting Scottish deer management to an international audience. He is currently headlining a film festival in Canada with a film on that subject called The Cull. As well as action against the Daily Record, Neil has complained to the Scottish Parliament about Michael Russell MSP and to the Charities Commission about the behaviour of the BDS. He has been a victim of doxing, where someone put his wife's mobile and his home telephone numbers online. They have had offensive calls late into the night from Antis and at least one threat of violence from a deer stalker that is now in the hands of the police. Andrew Venables puts forward what he reckons is the main motivation for the attacks by deer stalkers on Neil and Fraser. The same reason that NGOs turn on each other, the same reason that the antis have turned on us. Everybody's got an agenda to follow. And I don't just think of the information that's presented in clips like this. I think of why is it there and why am I being led to think this or that about it? In the world of hunting, what we saw there was no great shock no great shakes, not necessarily perfect, but we're all out there hunting, doing the best we can on the day. As I say, with the wisdom of hindsight, we'd all be perfect. I think that the motivation behind this is likely, unfortunately, to be negative, to be destructive, to be extremely divisively introspective, and I suspect that reputations have been put on stake for reasons of jealousy, spite and political agendas. Meanwhile, Fraser is still feeling the emotional effects. Now, did you get a feeling at any stage that some of this was orchestrated against you uh, or or against Neil? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I almost felt as though I'd been caught up in a witch hunt. A new study by Basque reveals this week that as many as 64% of Scottish gamekeepers experience threatening behaviour or abuse from members of the public at least once a year. Should... Our community know better.